where technology dissolves into nearly every ordinary thing all around us. And this is what I call enchanted objects. Now, for me, the, the, the internet of Legos was the first uh, insight into this. In the 90s, I got to work with Lego on this project called the Lego Mindstorms Project, which was to embed sensors and computation into Lego bricks so kids could construct behaviors that they loved. Now, if you can do it in a kid's toy, 20 years ago. <laughs> you can do nearly everything now. Um, I also got to, to help with, with Guitar Hero, which I think was the most successful video game of all time because it took the traditional form of a guitar and sort of took, went out of the video game controller world into something that was haptic and the right scale to jam on. Now, how many people remember back in Middle Earth where Frodo had a spectacular sword. Do you remember what the sword did? Yeah, it glowed when orcs were nearby. Now, I love this idea, and two companies ago, at a company called Ambient Devices, we were inspired by this to not glow when orcs were nearby, but to make an umbrella that glowed when rain was nearby. And you know, for me, it wasn't a great seller, but it was it, <laughs> the idea of that interfaces could be that simple. You know, that you wouldn't need an app store, you wouldn't need even a computer manual, you would just have an umbrella that just did the right thing and just alerted you to its upcoming need. So I'm inspired by that, and I'm also inspired by and, and coach my students to go back to their childhoods, to go back to Greek myths and fairy tales of, you know, the myth of Hermes, who, who was the goddess of borders and signifies seamless travel between the world of gods and the world of men, or Dorothy, who had fabulous shoes, like our other speaker this morning, uh, <laughs> who, you know, where a couple of clicks could take her home, or Nike, the, also a Greek god that promises uh, not only effortless speed, and, uh, but also the ability to quantify that. Now, do you remember the, the mirror that shows who is the fairest of them all? Of course you do. There's a, a company called Memory Mirror in New York that is doing a mirror that shows you which outfit is the fairest of them all in Neiman Marcus stores. So you can walk up to the mirror, it recognizes who you are, it shows you, it shows you yourself, and then shows you with a gesture recent outfits, which is the key in any magic mirror. But again, it's this everyday surface that becomes something more. Uh, well, I, I tried to make a poster um, of sort of a periodic table, if you will, of all of the uh, inspiring Internet of Things objects that I saw coming out about a year ago. And I tried to organize them by these fundamental psychological drives, the things like, the things you find in fairy tales, you know, the, 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 want, the need to be all-knowing or to connect with another person or for safekeeping, uh, for a long life or for effortless movement around the world, teleportation, or for personal expression. And I just want to give you about six examples of objects that I find inspiring that, that sort of start off with Greek myth or start off with a fairy tale and then have leapt from that, from that vision of, a, of an experience into an actual innovation. And I'll start off with crystal balls because that for me sort of typifies how an object that's all about the future, all about seeing something uh, some other place. Well, about 15 years ago, I developed an object called the Ambient Orb. It actually had a wireless chip inside. We used a pager network, because that was the easiest way to do that at that time. And the color was associated with any one-dimensionalizable data you cared about. So people could track things like the stock market, or the temperature outside, or what the pollen count's gonna be tomorrow if you have an asthmatic kid, or if you are into sailing, you sort of wanna know whether there's too much or not enough wind whether the fish are biting, whether your garden needs watering, sort of any, anything that could be put on a one-dimensional spectrum. And you know, the big insight for that was when people had this in their life, having data that's unavoidable absolutely changes people's behavior. So people would trade more stocks, which is not a good thing, <laughs> if, they, if it shows the stock market. They would take better care of their diabetes if it shows blood sugar levels. They would take the, tr the bus if it showed when the next bus is coming, more likely, because it was just data that was around them all the time. And the company today is just working with energy companies to try to make the invisible, how much are you consuming with energy and how much are you spending, visible in terms of a glanceable, a glanceable object. And one little story is uh, that I think it's inspiring, especially for people who are architects and build buildings, is that this data could be not only personal scale or, or team scale, but also could be uh, corporate scale. So we had a bank in North Carolina whose CEO said, 
Customer satisfaction is the most important metric to this company, and I believe in feedback loops, and I want to make real-time customer satisfaction as big as possible. Build me a monolith outside of the bank that just shows, based on its color, how happy my customers are, and I'm going to tell all my employees about it. So pretty interesting, right, to have this one data that's dynamic to change behavior.